I'm Montessa Young, Extension Educator for University of Idaho Extension, Washington County. And we are going to answer the question in this presentation, why drip? So this is the picture I always like to show to explain why drip irrigation may be a good idea in Idaho. So this is a picture from Google Earth showing my location in Weezer, Idaho, and also some of the, the southern part of Idaho. As you can see, those green strips are where irrigation is available, and the brown areas would be where irrigation is not available. So in southern Idaho, you are living in a high desert area that only gets 10 to 12 inches of rainfall, um, and we rely on surface water through the, the Snake River Plain to be able to irrigate with, and also groundwater for our wells. So this is a precious resource, and we should be doing whatever we can to, to grow uh, sustainably. And I think drip irrigation is a big part of that. So I always get asked in the office, what can I grow that doesn't require any water or any maintenance? And I always have to say, cheat grass and sagebrush. So if, if you're growing anything other than that, uh, drip irrigation might be a thing to look into. So as I mentioned, the main reason for drip irrigation is just the conservation of water. It is estimated that you use 30 to 70 percent less water compared to a conventional sprinkler. Um, that number varies a lot depending on how efficient your sprinkler was. It also reduces runoff, so you don't have uh, soil and nutrients that are running off into your surface water and causing eutrophication issues. Another great reason is healthier plants. Um, drip irrigation makes it easy to provide a consistent level of moisture to your plants. You're not getting water on the leaf surfaces, and this, this can decrease the amount of disease that you will see on your plants. And it also decreases weed growth. Many weeds will grow just fine without water, but they do grow slowly, more slowly if you withhold water. Um, so if you're only watering just the plants that you want, you will decrease weed growth in other areas. Another reason I like drip irrigation is it's easy installation. Uh, there are so many different drip irrigation projects out there now that it really provides a flexible design. You don't need any prior experience or contractor's license to put in drip irrigation. It's very simple. And you can exactly match your plant water needs to your delivery method. And we'll talk about that more when we talk about drip design. In order to understand irrigation, we have to talk a little bit about the relationship between soil and water. So this graphic shows the soil components and the overall averages. So cut down the middle, about half of your soil is what we consider soil, the mineral and the org organic matter portion. And the other half is air and water space. So water should take up 20 to 30 percent of your soil. So this gives different soils different water holding capacities. So if you're growing something on a, a side of a river beach, then you might have a coarse sand and only be able to hold a quarter to three quarter of inches per foot of soil of water. Or you may uh, have the ability to make some pottery at your place and have clay soil where you have 1.2 to 1.5 inches per foot of soil available. If we look on the right hand table, on the left hand side it shows your soil water contact in percentages. On the, across the bottom, it shows your soil texture class. And then the, the in-between is your field capacity and permanent wilting point. And this is the area where you can hold plant available water. So if you can see if you have a very sandy soil, is that you're at the permanent wilting point at 5%, but your soil will only hold 6-7% of water. So you have a narrow range there. So sands require you to water uh, very often. Um, and probably not very much each time, just because the, the water, you know, if you put three quarters of inches of water on the top, you've already gone a foot down in the soil. Well, if we look over at our clay loam, we have much more plant available water um, underneath that graph. 
So the permanent wilting point moves up to about 20%. I like to think of the permanent wilting point like a straw. So the, the plant can only suck so hard to get water out of the soil. And in a clay loam, uh, most plants can, can only suck down to about 15% of the soil water content. But that soil can hold, you know, 35% of, of its capacity, at fill capacity. So when you're watering a silt loam or a clay loam, um, you can water slowly and deeply and less often. Um, when you get into a clay, you actually have to water very slowly, so that water has time to percolate into the soil. So let's talk about water movement in soils. So here's a comparison of two different soils. On the left hand side, we have a sandy soil. And on the right hand side, we have a clay soil. So if we look at the light blue mark, it took 24 hours to get to that point, to 72 inches, and it's made a, a narrow carrot-shaped cone. In a clay soil, it would probably have taken 48 hours to make that same shape. As you can see, you've got a broader cone or it's covered more area. Let's compare that to the dark blue. In 15 minutes in a sandy soil, you can have the water down to 12 inches in a, in a small little space. And uh, if we look over at the clay soil, it may take up to four hours to have that same, that same coverage um, in a clay soil. So the, the point of this grass is sandy soils we can water um, for not very long, um, but you're going to have to water for more often. And clay soils we have to water very slowly, um, but we don't have to water as often. That water is going to cover a larger area and deeper area. So there's a lot of factors that go into irrigation scheduling. So for your soils, you need to understand the water holding capacity the infiltration, how fast water will go into the soil, and drainage. You want to be sure that your plants have air, so you don't want them to be sitting in water all the time. You have to think about the crop that you're growing, uh, the rooting depth. If you're growing corn, it has a very shallow rooting depth. If you're growing um, another crop like a tomato, it could go down to, to two, two and a half feet. You have to think about evapotranspiration, or ET. It's going to take more water in August when the plant is in full growth and it's very warm outside. And it's going to take less water when the plant's a seedling in the spring and there's cooler weather. And then overall the weather. Wind can have a, a great effect on your irrigation schedule. Wind can be very drying to plants, um, increases the evaporation rate. And maybe you're lucky enough that you get some precipitation, so you have to to balance the precipitation with what you're applying through irrigation. So irrigation scheduling can be a tricky part. Most vegetables, most um, especially leafy greens, want to have a, a basic level of moisture there at all times. They don't want to be dried out. Or if you're looking at a tomato or a pepper, um, they like to have adequate water, um, but sometimes of, of dryness too to have, make them um, increase their fruit production. So different irrigation system types apply water in different ways. And what are some of the advantages and disadvantages? So sprinklers apply water in a spray pattern, depending on the sprinkler. They can be gear driven or sprays or hose end. And we even have sprinklers that hook up to drip systems, which kind of combine two things. So the advantage of a sprinkler is it generally can cover a large area. Uh, some of the disadvantages is a lot of spray patterns don't apply the water evenly um, and it also you have a risk of uh, increased evaporation when you're running the sprinkler. So another method is gravity. So you could have furrows down your garden or maybe you just walk around with the hose. I think that's my grandma's favorite way to water her garden. Uh, so you're watering over an area and the water is soaking in. So one of the advantages is that you get a nice deep watering with gravity irrigation. Uh, some of the disadvantages are it's not always an even watering um, and you also have to have to really watch it. You have to be out there more often to either run the water down the furrows or apply with a hose. And Sometimes your plants look better off because you're, you're out there watching them daily as you apply with the hose, but 
you do have to take that into your time management. So drip, you're going to water more slowly and it's going to be directly applied to the ground around the plant. So some of the advantages are the water savings, um, the prevention of weeds outside of that drip area, and of course the, the conservation, just not using as much water.